Hello everybody and welcome to Moon Kitty Judges Your Ships. All of these ships are provided to me by my patrons, so I'll be lightheartedly telling you what I think of all of them as we go through. I'm going to introduce them as user's ship is this and this, but I don't think all of these were suggested because they actually like the ship in question. It's not their ship, their ship, it's just the one they suggested. And to be fair and keep this not too long, I only took one ship from each person. I also want to say, if you like a ship that I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no problem. Largely, I'm not actually very invested in Warrior Cat shipping at all because it's, well... Warrior Cat shipping? I don't think I've had an actual strong feeling about this since 2009. May memory data ship is Mothwing and Leafpool. I have no critiques. Mothpool is perfect. It's got strong canon backing, it's cute, it's fun, the characters look good together, and everyone loves Mothpool. If they don't love Mothpool, I, I raise one eyebrow dramatically and stare them in the eyes and go, yeah, 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 yeah. Ross's ship is Firestar and One Star, and I really like this one for its potential for angst. One Star's closeness with Firestar and general friendliness with ThunderClan is a source of a lot of doubt for One Star as a new leader, and I think making him even closer with Firestar would cause more problems and more drama, so I'm all for it. Sunnyfall's ship is Toadstep and Briarlight. I believe in gay Toadstep, Sunny. I can't approve of this. Not gay with Lion Blaze, mind you, just, just gay in general. Archie's ship is Hollyleaf and Cinderheart. Uh, Hollyleaf and Cinderheart is kind of like a fandom classic nowadays. Its roots are in the book The Forgotten Warrior, where they act close when she comes back, and Millie says that they were best friends before Hollyleaf went away. And I can believe it if she said something like, Cinderpaw was Hollypaw's best friend when they were apprentices, but... Okay, Cinderheart, uh, Cinderheart is prominent in Hollypaw's training chapters in Power of Three because they were apprentices at the same time, but overall she's got way more time spent with Jayfeather than she does Holly, and when she becomes a warrior they're barely even seen together anymore except when she goes, What have you done? when Hollyleaf reveals her parents' secret. So, I've always found the claim that they were best friends in Omen of the Stars to be a little unsubstantiated. That said, I prefer Hollyleaf with Hazeltail thanks to their interactions on the journey in the book Sunrise, where Hazeltail is just super excited to be involved and seems to be really enjoying spending time with her. I think it's cute. Not that either of these ships are more valid than the other, uh, they just both only rely on one book. So I, I think that um, Holly Cinder is cute, and I think it does have canon backing. I just like Holly Hazel more. Resident Jagged Peak Liker's ship is Feathertail and Ferncloud. Feathertail and Ferncloud is a relatively new one that comes from the manga A Shadow in River Clan. It's based on these. In Ferncloud's case, you need to ignore the fact that she's blushing because she's talking about all the babies she's having with Dust Pelt. But why is Feathertail blushing, hmm? Is it because Ferncloud is pretty? I think James L. Barry did this on purpose, and I think that he should keep having the characters liberally blushing at each other on purpose to make more ships. Sweater Kitty's ship is Squirrel Flight and Daisy. This one I'm not sure about? Well, Daisy has no canon age, she came to the clans as a mother, and I always thought of her as, like, grandma-ish? And don't get me wrong, both characters are currently literal grandmas, and Daisy had previously gotten together with Spiderleg, who was probably only, like, over half a year older than Squirrel Flight to begin with. I just can't really get over thinking of Daisy as a million years old compared to everybody else. So there's nothing wrong with it, it's just shipping Daisy isn't really my thing, unless they introduce, like, another old woman who seems very old <laughs> to ship her with. Um, I'd rather scroll flight with a character on her level anyway, though, without any sort of power imbalance, which is going to be pretty hard if she becomes Scroll Star, but if she becomes Scroll Star, we're good, we don't need any, we don't need any of this anyway. Dingiso's ship is Alderheart and Puddleshine. I see this one a lot, but I don't know if it actually comes from anything in particular. I think it's really just the whole, like, two medicine cats, they get along kind of thing going on. Um, although Alderheart does feed Puddleshine poison to save his life that one time, I guess, I guess that could have done it. But I really have no strong feelings about this one way, one way or another. Um, shipping Alderheart is like shipping a piece of cardboard a little bit. I could basically just see him with anyone at all that he's ever interacted with, ever. Lark's ship is Hawkwing and Plumwillow. I think this is fun. I especially like it in the wake of Sandy Nose coming back. Uh, Hawkwing has bonded with this person over shared loss, but suddenly their loss is gone and Hawkwing is left alone again. I, I love that whole situation just kicking his butt. Songstep's ship is Fallen Leaves and Hollyleaf. 
okay, sorry, this is the first one I actually don't like. Uh, I hate Fallen Leaves and Holly Leaf. I think Fallen Leaves is possessive, passive aggressive, and needs to go to lots and lots of ghost therapy. Also, Holly Leaf is gay. Beasting's ship is Stormcloud and Sparkpelt. Honestly, I would love to see Sparkpelt move on and get a second mate after Larksong's death. She doesn't really need to have any kits, and Firestar's line is massive at this point, but the Toms move on all the time after their first wife or love interest dies. I think Sparkpelt should get in on that. Also, I think Stormcloud is one of the characters who visited her while she was struggling, so that's nice, if I remember correctly. That said, who it is she gets with matters pretty little next to that. Stormcloud is a good option for any straight cat pairing because his genetics are just free real estate. He's incredibly single. That said, he's starting to get a bit old, so he'd better hurry up in any ship he gets involved in before he's like Thornclaw adjacent. I think the fact that Stormcloud even is single right now comes from the fact that I don't think the new team has read Bramblestar's Storm. Black Phantom 1412's ship is Brambleclaw and Stormfur. And again, sorry, I hate all Brambleclaw ships. If he treated Squirrelflight the way he did, he would treat anyone the way he did, you know? Unless treating Squirrelflight the way he did was born out of some sort of kitty cat sexism, which is even worse. So it, it's kind of like a question of, is Brambleclaw horrible to everyone he dates? Or is Brambleclaw just horrible to women, you know? And, and both of those options, I don't like them. Scylla's ship is Mothwing and Crowfeather and Leafpool. I think Crowfeather would be way too insecure to even consider participating in something like this, and I don't think that Mothwing would put up with Crowfeather either. Metallic Rosefinch's ship is Squirrelflight and Crowfeather, and I'm sorry, Warrior Cats fandom, but my darkest secret is that I do not think Scroll Crow makes any sense at all. Sure, they're the same age, and they were both on the journey, but that's largely meaningless if you actually read the books. I feel like it forgets that Crowpaw is entirely preoccupied with Feathertail, and Feathertail is this big, beautiful, smart River Clan warrior, and she's this picture of perfection, and Squirrelpaw in comparison is like this small, spoiled, weird kid, know-it-all, tomboy type of character that can't really compete in the same way. I think Crowfeather is the type of guy who wouldn't even consider her realistically. I mean, not that I'm calling Crowfeather shallow, but I am calling Calling crow feather shallow. He pursued Leafpool because she reminded him of Feathertail, and Nightcloud because she was a competent, loyal, WindClan first kind of warrior that would make him look good, and also very commonly described as being beautiful alongside that. I think that the guy has high standards that Squilf just wouldn't meet. Also, on another level, I don't think he treats women very well at all. I think almost every woman in his life past Feathertail has just been used to make himself feel better or look better to the clan, and I don't feel like, uh, he thinks of anyone but himself, really. So I, I don't think that they're good together either, but I also don't think Crowfeather's good with anyone, so, eh. Vermi's ship is Shadow Sight and Root Spring. While they only talk like three times in a book series where they're both protagonists, I say go for it regardless. I mean, what's the detriment here? I don't think there is one. Root Spring, there's a cat that can share the pain you're feeling right now, and it's Shadow Sight. We can even pretend he's sad because he recognized Bristlefrost as his cousin at some point. It's a fine ship, and there's nothing stopping it from happening. Full speed ahead. If these boys are going to end their series traumatized, they might as well be traumatized together. Oh jeez, this does make me think that... <laughs> Okay, okay, sometimes in fanfiction, they will do this thing where, because they don't really want to change the, the relationships that exist in canon, they'll just really unceremoniously kill off the female character who's in the way of their ship. And uh, having Bristlefrost die and have her ghost also die feels so much like that kind of setup. Anyways, Val's ship is Blue Star and Yellowfang. I think this would be fun. I like the idea of Blue Star being able to find trust in Yellowfang in the same way that she found trust in Fireheart when she was disillusioned with StarClan. Unfortunately, Yellowfang dies much too quickly for that really to be an implication, or for them to have any real strong dynamic in the books. I would love to see more of them together outside of StarClan, but unfortunately both of them had the, uh, the, the role that they're mentor-like figures to Fireheart, so you know they had to die. And yes, I know Blue Star was his actual mentor. Duplex Be Great ship is Flipclaw and Feather of Flying Hawk. This one is great and fantastic and good. It has lots of canon basis in Graystripe's vow. The boys love to be together, and I think Feather of Flying Hawk should show up in ThunderClan tomorrow like, um, hi, so is this where Flipclaw lives? Haha, <laughs> just wanted to say, can I live with you? 
I strongly think Feather should go to ThunderClan instead of the other way around so that we don't ever, ever have to go to the mountains again ever in any book ever. It does make me wonder why finding two unrelated boys in this series who actually get along is so, so hard, though. I think all the cats should stop having siblings and start having friends. So that we can ship them with their friends, obviously. Sky's ship is Purdy and One-Eye. I think this has plenty of basis in canon because Purdy is 900 years old. I would love to see how Starflower would be influenced by Purdy being her stepfather. Sir Bob the Marvelous' ship is Poppy Frost and Fallen Leaves. This one is probably the most crack ship out of anything that's been given to me so far. Poppy Frost? Fallen Leaves? I guess they both have kind of a caught between life and death thing about them, but my opinion on Fallen Leaves as a person still stands, and I think he's got a lifetime of therapy to do before he's ready to have a mature relationship with anyone. Aussie Fradge's ship is Ravenpaw and Barley, and Ravenpaw and Barley is a canon ship. It's not a ship, it's just real. Look at what James L. Berry put on his Instagram. Look at how they're written in Ravenpaw's path. They are in love. This isn't a ship, it is real and true, and if you believe they are just friends, you have to live with the fact you are wrong for the rest of your life. In the Ravenpaw novella, it's like they're all but explicitly said to be together, so it's really just... It's a matter of semantics at this point. They're definitely in love. River Branch's ship is Starflower and Fernleaf. I feel like Starflower could have attached herself to basically any cat that, at the right point in time, had the kind of power and security to ensure her safety in clan life. She had a complete lack of security within the newly established society that she found herself on the fringes of, and was being punished by others for her role as an antagonist. I think that sort of thing could work if any cat appealed to the part of Starflower that desired stability. That said, the timeline for Fernleaf's involvement in Starflower's life doesn't line up super well with this idea, so I feel like as an author, Fernleaf would have to specifically be portrayed as a safer option than the Clear Sky who already exists. N not that this would be hard. Magi Magi's ship is Jayfeather and Briarlight. Jayfeather and Briarlight work very well as friends. They complement each other well and bounce off each other well. I feel like if you make that relationship romantic, the best thing you can do is change almost absolutely nothing about their relationship but that label and the strength of their feelings. That said, Jayfeather is primarily Briarlight's main caretaker for most of the books that they're together, so their dynamic is a little... awkward. There's definitely a power imbalance there. Sneaky's ship is Leafpool and Cody. I actually like the idea that Cody is one of Leafpool's various crushes, but I'm not sure about them actually being in a relationship or Cody returning those feelings, as they only really know each other while Leafpaw is an apprentice. I like her as maybe some sort of, like, fleeting first crush for Leafpaw. Arkjek's ship is Ashfur and Scourge, and Ashfur is only dating him because he reminds him of Scrollflight and Scourge can do better. Trans Redtail's ship is Longtail and Firestar, and I think this is another good Firestar ship. I think that the nature of Firestar is that you could throw him at anything, and I'd be like, sure, that works. The guy basically started liking Sandstorm because Cinderpelt told him that Sand likes him. What if Cinderpelt told him that Longtail likes him? The answer is simple. Firestar becomes bi on the spot. And then he wouldn't have had any excuse to not make Longtail his deputy. Willow's ship is Turtletail and Bumble. This one is cute on, like, a face value level. That said, it just reminds me of how miserably both of these characters were treated, especially Bumble in Dawn of the Clans. It would have been nice, though, if they had gotten out of there together while they were still getting along before, you know, various. Willow, this is a different Willow. Willow's ship is Ivy Pool and Fernsong. I've never been particularly interested in Ivy Pool, but as a character in short videos, I think this dynamic is cute. Tough, war-torn Ivy Pool and fluffy, little, exaggerated Kitty Fernsong. That said, it's frustrating that we got a scene where this man insists that he's going to stay in the nursery and take care of the kits while she worked, and then we don't really see it happen. Okay, well, we see it half happen in a novella. We see Fernsong, you know, kind of being a father character, which is very, very weird for warrior cats, but we don't see Ivy Pool not being in the nursery. So he doesn't take her place, and he's not, you know, changing his job description or anything. He's just involved. In Spot for his Rebellion specifically, he's seen looking after his children and spending time in the nursery, but he isn't listed as a queen, and Ivy Pool still is. There's an implication in that book that he's largely taking care of them, which is better than nothing, but I really just wanted him to go, you know, all the way with it. 
The book also says Fernsong was the most indulgent father in the clan, spending most of his time in the nursery with his kits, and Ivy Pool was a loving mother, which, like, okay, sure. Maybe once Ivy Pool had kids, she didn't want to go with the original plan, but... That, if that was the case, they could have at least said it somewhere, I don't know. It's disappointing that all of this is just squished away in a novella instead of, like, actually in the main series. And the implication that a father, well, being a father at all makes them stand out in the Warrior Cats universe is kind of like a little award for Fernsong that says, congrats, you're apparently the only dad in Warrior Cats who has ever done the bare minimum. I want the gender roles to be destroyed. A Tom could do Daisy's job. She hasn't had milk in eight years. If Fernsong takes Daisy's job when she dies, I forgive him. And that's my opinion on Fern Ivy, I guess. Chris Pinestar fans' ship is Leopard Star and Sasha. I like basically every Leopard Star ship and uh, almost every Sasha ship, so this is perfect. Leopard Star wanted so badly to keep her in the clan, and she keeps giving her chances to join them, to take a warrior name, to stay, and I feel like this is far superior to its direct competition, Sasha and Feathertail, as Leopard Star and Sasha are both closer in maturity, and Feathertail is kind of, uh, really mean to her? To the point where it might have been what convinced her to fully leave RiverClan, if you compare her anxieties about the gathering from her own manga to Feathertail's reaction to hearing about Sasha's relation with Tigerstar to hers, it, it's miserable. So, um, Leopard Star and Sasha is also good because it's not Feathertail and Sasha. Vampire's ship is Midnight and Rock. I do not like them, Sam I am. Star Hoarder's ship is Skywing and Appleheart. All of the Stone Clan cats are just best friends, very close best friends. Every single one, Skywing and Sunpool, only get to keep being mates on their page because it was decided on before the rule. If they look like they're gazing deeply into each other's eyes, that's just what close platonic friendship does to a guy. Talking Mongoose's ship is Sunbeam and Nightheart, and I'm sorry I can't do it here. I'm gonna have to have a whole video for this one. We'd be here all day long. Secondarily, Mongoose's ship is Brightheart and Cloudtail. I think this is the number one most beloved ship in Warrior Cats ever when it comes to actually canon stuff. It's pretty cute and they get along well, especially in the new graphic novel about super pregnant Brightheart. That said, I do feel a little bit weird about how little screen time Brightheart gets to herself in the first arc, and how Cloudtail's relationship with her leads to him speaking for her most of the critical points in their relationship, which I guess isn't something unwanted by Brightheart in canon, but but it is a very noticeable detriment to early Brightheart's character in an already weirdly Tom-heavy landscape of the first arc speaking roles. There's also that whole Daisy thing, but eh, I don't care about that whole Daisy thing that much. Cat's ship is Rainwhisker and Dovewing. Cat, he died before she was born, and she's still alive, and I can't work with this. Bloodhush's ship is Snowfur and Rosetail. This one's actually completely new to me. Legitimately, I don't think I've seen it until now. I think it's worth considering. Rosetail is very lonely in Blue Star's book, and it seems like Blue Star is one of her only friends, but at the same time, she's very interested in the relationships of others. We could probably play around with situations in this one, like maybe Rosetail is so nosy that she gets worried about Snowfur's budding relationship with Thistleclaw, and it all goes from there. It, it could work. I think Rosetail could work with a lot of cats regardless of interaction because she's so romance obsessed. Goat Boy's ship is Appleheart and Poppy Song. They are friends. The Stone Clan cats are friends. They're all friends with each other. Just, they're all friends. Every single one of them is a friend to the other friends that they have. Badgerpaw's ship is Squirrelflight and Hawkfrost. I hate this, but I'm going to humor it because it's funny. So for this to work, let's say Squirrelflake gets angry that Brambleclaw's been treating her resentfully, so she goes on a mission to prove once and for all that she was right about Hawkfrost's ambitions by, um, signing up for territory scouting patrols with him or something. But in the process, she starts getting really close to Hawkfrost by accident, because any cat at all would be nicer to her than Brambleclaw. So it creates, like, a fourth New Prophecy love triangle. That's what the New Prophecy needs, right? And then afterwards, he tries to kill her dad like the Lion King too. Pubble Pebble's ship is Toxic Redtail and Tiger Claw. I'm assuming this means the entire relationship is toxic and not just Redtail because Tiger Claw is also involved in it. I don't know if I'm on board with this. I'm all for relationships that are bad to progress the plot or make content more interesting, but I'm not sure how much this would actually add to the story, especially if we're following Redtail's debt. I think the uncertainty of Tiger Claw's feelings towards Redtail is part of what makes him so frightening in Redtail's book. 
Ashtray's ship is Brambleberry and Echo Mist. Yes, yes, Brambleberry and Echo Mist are great. Alongside being like the only two people who even try to look after Crooked Kit, it's nice to see like background characters being close to each other in the way that they are. I love them and I also just love Brambleberry in general. Bravo Music's ship is Sand and Fire and Grey. I think from Firestar or Graystripe's perspective, this could work fine, but it really leans on Sandstorm getting along with Graystripe. Not that they don't, I think that they do in canon, but like, romantically, would they like each other? Would Sandstorm be able to deal with like, the 11th joke about mistaking a salmon for a trout in the same night before having to relocate herself to the warrior's den? Uh, a lot to think about there, but maybe I'm just projecting because I don't think anyone truly would be able to deal with Graystripe. Besides Firestar, obviously. I think Firestar is basically the one person. I mean, obviously Millie exists, Silverstream exists, but I think that they're outliers who live in a cave. Um, but Firestar definitely... Definitely is the one guy who sees Graystripe for not Graystripe. Speaking of which, finally, Stern's ship is Graystripe alone. I agree. Couldn't agree more. And that's it for Moon Kitty Judges Your Ships. Uh, if, if these guys have more ships, I'll, I'll do this again sometime, eventually. And I know they have more ships, because basically everyone here uh, suggested, like, three ships, and I only picked the first one everybody did.